In this video, I'm going to be talking about the properties of logarithms and just the basic properties of them, not how you would implement them or apply them, really. Um, and I am going to do two videos um, to keep this really short, so this is part one of two. The first thing that I would like to look at here is um, recalling some of your laws of exponents. All right, Any number raised to the zero power is always one, and any number raised to the first power is always that number. All right, logarithms and um, exponent rules go hand in hand. So because we have these laws of exponents, then we know that the log of 1 to any base has to equal 0. And that's strictly because we can convert from exponential form to logarithmic form and back and forth. All right, so because any number raised to the 0 power is always 1, then we know the log of 1 to any base has to equal 0. Same thing, same thing for this one, the base is a raised to the first power, and it will always equal a. So converting that into logarithmic form, the base of uh, the log of a with the base of a has to equal 1. Okay, so those are two things that you just might want to um, kind of store, put in memory so that you can answer those types or evaluate those types of logs rather quickly. All right, there's a couple other ones that are helpful to memorize. If I've got a base and it's raised to the log of m base a. In other words, these two bases are the same, the base of the exponent and the base on the log there is the same, then I know my answer is just going to be whatever you're taking the log of there, which is m. And I can also rewrite that um, this way too, the log of a raised to the r with a base of a. So again, the two bases match, the base on the exponent matches and the base on the log matches. And when that's the case, then the answer is just r. So if you know those real quickly, it will help you to evaluate some. So I've got a couple of examples of these right here. Let's say I had seven raised to the log of two base seven. All right, well, I can make note here, my base on the log is seven, the base of this exponent is seven. So since both of those are seven, I can evaluate this real quickly as two. All right, then looking at this example, all right, I've got the log of 4 to the 5th with a base of 4 there. All right, so the base on the log is 4. The base on this exponent is also 4. So I can look at that real quickly, and I can evaluate that as being 5. All right, so just handy little things so that you can quickly evaluate some of your logs. There is also a change of base formula, which basically says that you can evaluate this log by using the change change of base formula. If I put the log of m base a, I can rewrite that and choose any base that I want. Usually we will go to a base of 10 just because that's the easiest way to do this, but it would be the log of m divided by the log of a. But there again with any base as long as the bases match. I can also do this with the natural log because natural log would have a base of e which would be the same base. Okay, so if I was trying to evaluate um, the log of 5 base 2, all right, and I had a calculator really handy. Then I could do, say, the log of 5 divided by the log of 2. All right, both of those being the base of 10. All right, and I could plug that into a calculator, get the decimal approximation. I could, I could have also chose, instead of the log, I could have chose natural log. I could have went the natural log of 5 over the natural log of 2. All right, putting both of those in the calculator, you would say that you would get an approximation of 2.322. Okay, just so just a quick short way if you've got a calculator of how you can evaluate that using the chains of base formula. All right, now for the last one in this first short video I'm going to do, um, I call it the jump the frog rule. Um, I think most textbooks usually call it a product rule, but um, this is a log. Okay, so imagine a log floating out in a river, all right, and it's got a little frog sitting on it, and he's sunning himself. When he gets too hot, all right, then he's going to jump off into the lake. All right, so in other words, our rule says that our little exponent, our little frog here, can jump off into the lake. So it would be p times the log of that. All right, now this rule works the other way too. All right, after he swims around and he gets a little tired, then he can jump back up on the log and rest. All right, so this, in my classroom, this is jump the frog, okay? Well, p can become down pulled down here in front so I can do a multiplication, or I can also go backwards and I can put it back up on that log. Okay, so um, this one right here would be the log of 7 to the 4th, base 5. All right, so my frog is 4, he can be jumped down in front, so 4 times the log of 7, base 5. 
okay, that's implementing the jump the frog rule. All right, now this one right here uh, may not look like you can implement this, but this natural log of the square root of x can be rewritten. Uh, if you remember your radical rules going back and forth between exponents and radicals, I could rewrite that as the natural log of x raised to the one half because that's square root, so that's from an Algebra 2 review there. And then now the 1 half can be jumped out in front, so 1 half natural log of x. Okay, so that's jumping the frog. All right, so this is just a really short video <clears throat> on four properties of logarithms. In part two, I will do two more properties, and then that pretty much is going to sum up your properties of logarithms. Thanks for watching. Be sure and give me a thumbs up, um, comment, and share with your friends. Thanks.